Welcome to the video series on Research Methods and Analysis by Data and Research. In this video, we will discuss about sampling methods. Many scientific truths we generalized in the population were based on the findings of the research in a sample of that population. Sampling can be defined as the process by which how we will select the sample from the population. Sampling can be classified into two based on its representativeness of the population. Representativeness is assumed to be high if each member in the population has the chance or probability to be the part of the sample. If the sampling method ascertains this probability, we can call it as probability sampling method. If the sampling method does not guarantee the probability, then we can call it as non-probability sampling method. In probability sampling method, we will choose the participants randomly from the population. Hence, this type of sampling method is also called random sampling method. Random selection can be easily practiced. If the population is definite, as a first step, we can make a list of the participants. Each participant can be identified with an ID. First, we can prepare a set of lots with an ID in each. After preparing it, we will fold the lots and deposit in a fish bowl. Now we can choose one lot after the other from the fish bowl. The individual with the ID in the chosen lot will be considered for the sample. While doing this, we ensure that everybody in the population will get a chance to be included in the sample. For instance, here the first person we chose is of ID 33. The second person is of ID 27. Likewise, I randomly chose 10 participants from the population to the sample using fishbowl technique. What we did now is called simple random sampling. However, this fishbowl method is not feasible if the population is large. In such situations, we will use the table of random numbers. The table of random numbers is a table with a lot of numbers. I can choose the participants based on the numbers one after the other following a pre-developed pattern. Here, based on a pattern, I am choosing ID number 80 first, then 94. then 252. I can continue like this until I receive an adequate sample. After the arrival of computer, we can have computer generated random numbers. This is done when using random number generating software. We have to enter the range of the number in the software first. Then in each click, the numbers appear randomly. For instance, the first member ID 93 the second member ID 2006, next member ID 30,657, fourth member is an individual with the ID 165,000, fifth is 16 and so on. We will do simple random sampling using any of these methods. Stratified sampling is a probability sampling method we may use if we need a representative sample based on strata. For instance, we like to have a sample of government healthcare workers for our next research and we need a sample representing the whole India. First, we may conduct a simple random sampling to choose the states in India using a fishbowl technique. Imagine that we chose 8 states. This is the first strata. Now imagine that in first states there are 50 hospitals. In the second, there are 60 hospitals. In the third state, there are 30 hospitals. And in the fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh and eighth states, there are 40, 70, 90, 20 and 30 hospitals respectively. We will select a random sample of hospitals in an exact proportion such as 5 hospitals from the first state, 6 from the second, 3 from the third and 4, 7, 9, 2 and 3 from each state. This is the second strata. From each of these hospitals, we will randomly choose the participants again in proportion to the number of healthcare workers. This will become third strata. 
in area sampling methods we will choose the areas and all the members in the chosen area will become a part of the sample for instance while conducting the research on the political socialization among the citizens between the age of 45 and 55 in a gram panchayat with 15 wards we may randomly choose 5 wards all the citizens aged between 45 and 55 in these wards will be chosen to the sample in cluster sampling method instead of area we are choosing clusters imagine that we have to conduct a research among the teachers from an educational district the teachers in the education district are the members of different clusters using a random sampling method we can choose four of these clusters and then collect data from all the teachers in these clusters if the sampling method cannot ascertain that all the members of the population have the probability to be chosen to the sample then sampling method is non probability sampling method the most popular non probability sampling method is convenient sampling or accidental sampling method here we will select our sample as we meet them there is no presupposed strategy we may meet them individually or in groups we may continue this process until we achieve a sufficient sample size in judgment sampling we may take a little more effort to identify the sample we may frame some criteria to make the judgment about the potential participant quota sampling has a similarity to stratified random sampling we will decide specific quotas for each category in the sample for instance we conduct research among government healthcare workers in india we will deliberately choose states which are easily accessible to us in each of these five states we will decide as per our accessibility the hospitals from where we may collect data from these hospitals we may select the healthcare workers again as per our accessibility to them before the data collection we will decide quota how many states how many hospitals from each state and how many participants from each hospital finally we will have a considerable sample with us segmented into mutually exclusive groups such as 1000 healthcare workers from three government hospitals at rajasthan 1000 healthcare workers from three government hospitals at west bengal and so on another interesting non probability sampling method is snowball sampling we will use this if we do not have access to potential participants for instance we need a sample of hiv patients we will first approach the person whom we know as hiv positive patient through this person i will find another person and then another and then another and so on when a snowball rolls over the snow from the top of a snow mountain its size increases likewise when we move from participant to participant the sample size increases now isn't there a possibility that a non probability sampling can in some ways be representative to the population the answer is yes if we collected a sample of water from a well in a beaker the water in the beaker represents the water in the well however in humanities and social science research the sample is more behavioral than physical still if we are ready to take a large sample there is a probability that the sample has almost all the characteristics of the population we can consider that sample as representative sample summing up these are the most popular probability and non probability sampling method hope you enjoyed sampling if you have any questions suggestions or recommendations please write to dnr365@gmail.com